Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COB. I'm Daniela Kuye. Now, what a day it has been and what a week it is. So let's have a look and see how the local market closed. And the ASX 200 is currently up by around 18 points to 7,596, a just over two tenths of a percent. And uh, I don't think we're going to get the SIBO 200, but I think it's up by a similar amount. Now, let's check and have a look at what the three themes are, because there is so much going on in markets this week. Now, retail sales today came out much weaker than expected. And uh, we really are seeing what could be termed a bit as a retail rut. Now, not only did retail sales fall by 2.7% in the month of December, but also there was a downgrade in terms of the November figures. So as the coot like to say, on uh, Twitter or X today, once you take into account 3% immigration, 4% in terms of inflation, the numbers were very, very weak. Compounding that, we have seen Godfrey's, a store that is over 100 years old, well, they have gone into voluntary administration. So maybe you have lost your chance to go out and grab a very cheap vacuum cleaner. Okay, uh, it is not meant to be bidding time, it is biding time. And the reason it is biding time is of course we are waiting for tomorrow's December CPI reading here in Australia. But of course we have Alphabet as well as Microsoft reporting after the close in the US on Tuesday, which of course is Wednesday morning our time. So markets are also waiting for the FOMC meeting this week. So the ASX 200, which did start out strongly, has actually lost a bit of momentum over the course of the day. Now, just worth focusing on the fact that we're continuing to see special corporate situations coming up, and that's largely due to the fact that some assets are becoming particularly cheap. I am referring in this situation to City Chic, which will be the stock of the day, and they are in negotiations to sell off their US assets. Now, let's have a look at some of the sectors and see how they performed. Energy, Ampol was the only one up. Uh, whilst we did see a stronger oil price post that drone attack on US troops over the weekend, we have seen a wee bit of a pullback there, and that's being reflected across the board with Woodside off slightly, Santos off by just over 1%, and also the coal stocks under pressure. One of the uh, green highlights today was the healthcare sector. And if we have a check with that, uh, hopefully that one is coming up. But if not, I'll just give you a quick, uh, there we go. Healthcare stocks were firmer today, led by CSL, up by over 1%, tracking towards $297. So moving back to that 300 level. Equally, Ramsey Healthcare up by just over six tenths of a percent and Sonic by one spot, one five percent. Now let's have a look at the industrials as well and see how they did. Uh, we did have an update from Atlas Arteria, which I'll be commenting on soon, but Transurban was bid up by almost 1% and Seven Group was also firmer. So let's turn to those top corporate stories of today. And Atlas Arteria's quarterly weighted average toll revenue was 5.9% higher and weighted average traffic for the quarter was up 2.2% higher than 2022. Those shares up by 1.9%. Sandfire Resort Resources posted quarterly revenue of $217 million, with the group increasing its copper production to 32,400 tonnes. That stock also up by 3.6%. But the outlier, the standout today, up 28%, was Megaport. And second quarter revenue coming in just shy of $49 million, up 5% on the previous quarter, with net cash flow up 23% from the same time last year. Whereas shares of Nickel Industries, my gosh, it is the day of some big movers, up 22.5%. 
and this is their highest level in nearly three years after the company reported record output of nearly 35,000 metric tonnes in the three months to the end of December. Silver Lake also in focus, maintaining full year sales guidance after quarterly production of more than 56,000 ounces of gold and 236 tonnes of copper. Those shares up by 1%. And finally, City Chic is out with the trading update, forecasting sales revenue to take a near 30% dive in the first half as customers pull back on spending in the face of higher interest rates and cost of living crisis. But that is all pretty much in the news. We will come back to City Chic, which is, of course, the stock of the day. However, we're going to move to our very special guest today. Jessica Ramir of Moomoo joins me now. Jessica, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining the COB today. And just run us through your take on Tesla and Netflix. They're obviously in the past, but nevertheless, part of the Mag 7 were at least, you know, they were. Certainly Tesla's doing its best to move out. Mm. I think it's a really good question. It's worth highlighting that because it's important that we look back to see what actually happened, what lessons did we learn last week, and what will that basically tell us about this week? I don't know if you can hear me or see me, but I hope you can. But what we saw, um, we're seeing broadly across the street, we're seeing optionality or buying of options is actually quite low. And the pricing of options is actually a little bit more um, telling. So the pricing of options, Danielle, is actually quite low historically. Um, when you look at uh, option pricing throughout earnings season in the US. And what this is telling us is there's not really many bets that we're going to see huge swings to the upside or downside. And it's really important to note that what actually went wrong last week, if you were buying options, options were quite cheap to buy. But then we saw, of course, our Tesla shares uh, fell over 10%. Um, and they were down about 13% to be precise. And then Netflix did a beat, um, very bright and cheery outlook going into WWE, a very um, a very high profile sport, um, a very long tenure of their of their ink of the, of the of the deal that they inked with WWE as well, um, and so their shares jumped up 18%. And clearly, this is showing us that um, the market is kind of getting the option pricing wrong. And so we think about this week. So we've got four big names uh, that have very large portions in the S&P 500 and the QQQs. So all of the ETFs that you look at that have got exposure to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 may potentially be on the line here. And the reason that I'm saying that is because still coming into this week, Danielle, options are still very cheap. And this is basically, again, saying that no one is expecting any big movements this week. So if we get disappointment, um, it could essentially cause uh, tech and also the broader market to pull back. So again, just really keep your eyes on that. Surprises to the upside, uh, everyone loves a surprise and delight. No one's going to complain about that. But the problem is um, the market is in a Goldilocks scenario. We are at all time highs and uh, the VIX has actually popped up. Um, so we are potentially at risk um, of some disappointment. So that's something to consider. Uh, we also know that we have seen a lot of downgrades coming into this earnings season, Danielle. So people, you know, weren't really expecting uh, spectacular things. And then so surprises to the upside are great. It's just that the market's not prepared for surprises to the downside. So it's really important to just be careful of that. If you, uh, if you do want to maximise profits, it's probably worthwhile considering taking some profits off the table maybe. Yeah, absolutely, Jess. I mean, as you have rightly cited, the S&P at a record high. There's a lot baked into those big tech results. And uh, you use the great example of Netflix and Tesla there. But of course, we had the FOMC meeting and I was actually chatting with um, a, a chap called Ronnie Green today about this. And he had quite an interesting take. I mean, the market split about uh, whether he's going to be, Powell will be, you know, continue that dovish tone or whether he will revert to a possibly a less dovish tone with him feeling that the market's more weighted there. So he felt there could be a pleasant surprise from the FOMC meeting if you see Powell retain that more dovish stance. 
Yeah, I um, I do think that there are uh, increasingly, as the weeks have been going on um, since we kicked off the year, you've seen the futures really price out that uh, that March cut. So now, uh, I mean, the market's actually looking at a 50-50% chance of a cut in March. So, yeah, absolutely, any any dovish surprise will be a surprise. Um, and then you might potentially see the futures bump up or bring back in the probability of a uh, cut in March. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Um, I think that the, the chance or the probability of a cut may increase for for May. And so currently, as we stand today, Danielle, just looking at the futures price, the Fed's uh, futures are essentially suggesting that the market's betting there's an 80% chance of, of the cut in May. So again, dovish tone. Um, of course, you probably see other futures price in a high probability of, of a cut then. And then you could potentially see further higher highs hit for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. But I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jess, do you have any feel around the CPI tomorrow? I think the CPI is going to be really interesting. Um, I think that all in all, uh, of course, the, the trend the trend is down. So the trend is our friend, and that is supporting the RBA, uh, keeping their foot off the gas. And we know this year that the um, that now, uh, well and truly, uh, there's, I guess, no one really betting that there's going to be a hike this year by the RBA. But um, we would be likely to see, um, I guess, a read more or less um, straight down the barrel. We're not exactly expecting a CPI to really, you know, shoot through the floor, um, especially given that we have seen some CPI key indicators that we do look at actually um, increasing. So we're seeing rents, number one, two, insurance costs, and also our transportation costs as well. Um, they have come down for us consumers, but for the businesses, uh, they have not. And part and parcel of that we know is that we've seen the Trans-Pacific Trans um, transportation costs increase. And of course, um, Australia being fairly remote, um, some of those costs um, are being paid for by businesses and they may be uh, by the by passed on to some consumers. So just do be mindful that we could potentially see a tiny, a tiny surprise to the upside, but still the trend is down and the trend is our friend. And that's why uh, the futures will probably continue to price um, that. Uh, we're not likely to see a hike this year um, and hopefully other uh, futures uh, will behave and we can get some more uh, good news, some more good, good news. And uh, hopefully we do see the market start to uh, price in a high prob probability of a cut. But at this stage, um, the futures aren't really looking that promising. No one's really believing that the RBA has got firepower in it to make cuts this year. Okay, Jessica, okay. thank you so much. And I think we will, uh, we might win the uh, blooper of the year award here at Ausbiz <laughs> for being able to do, uh, almost do it telepathically with thumbs up and thumbs down in terms of communicating to the audience. Thank you so much. Have a safe trip uh, and look forward to uh, catching up soon. Oh, thanks so much. Well saved and well played, Danielle. Have a great afternoon. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I think it is my destiny to be doomed sometimes on the COB. <laughs> anyway, and the stock of the day, which we finally have, is a City Chic with Francesco Destradas of Ordmanet and Rudy Filipec of Van Dyke, who joined us on the call earlier today with their verdict. Your strategy and your risk appetite is in, 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 in the share market. For me, these struggling bottom of the barrel stories, they never appeal. Um, I know there's, I mean, there's at least one fund manager last year who completely uh, realigned his portfolio into uh, potential takeover targets, and he has done really, really well. Right. If you can do that, by all means, I mean, go right. for it. He's obviously been very, very good for his, for his, for his clientele. For me, that's, that's maybe the cherry on the cake you can take on. I mean, sometimes one of my stocks in the portfolio gets a takeover offer. Doesn't happen yeah. very often. Yeah. Um, I mean, you never say no, but to specifically go for such companies, to specifically aim for companies that <coughs> basically are in trouble, and then in the hope that they, they that, that the news becomes better at some stage, yeah. so it not, turns out not as bad. 
it's not my personal strategy, but and see, I don't feel comfortable uh, with that. Because you know, companies like JB Hi-Fi did extremely well. Don't put them in this category. I think yeah, JB Hi-Fi is a great. Yeah. I think they're a great retailer. Um, yeah. Whereas this one, you know, well, a lot of demand may have been brought forward into those consumer mm -hmm. periods where people have bought their clothing for a number of years. You know, I'm not sure how fashions play into that. I'm not, a, as you can see, yeah. fashionable sort of person. <laughs>